close your eyes and watch your breath. Tell yourself this is the most interesting thing in the world right now, because without your breath you would die. Nothing else would have any meaning if the breath weren't here. So hold on to the breath. And make sure the breath is comfortable, because if the breath is uncomfortable it's going to be unpleasant to stay in the present moment. So take a couple of good long deep in and out breaths and see how that feels. If long breathing feels good, keep it up. If it doesn't, you can change. Make it shorter, deeper, shallower, heavier, lighter. Find a rhythm and texture of breathing feels good all the way down to the body right now. And once you've found it, try to maintain it. This quality of maintaining a good place for the mind is really important because the mind tends to jump around a lot and it uses up a lot of energy in the jumping around. It doesn't get a chance to rest and it doesn't get a chance to see anything clearly. What we're doing is we make the mind still like this is on the one hand giving it some rest and also giving it some clarity because we want to know what it is in the mind that causes us to do things that we would hope would lead to happiness but tend to lead in the other direction. It doesn't make any sense to do anything that makes yourself suffer, but that's what we're doing a lot of the time. So we have to look into why this is happening. You want to be able to see your mind in action when an intention comes up. How do you know whether it's a good or a bad one? Do you look at it carefully before you go with it, or do you just jump right in and ride with it wherever it goes? It's the jumping in and riding wherever it goes. That's what leads to all kinds of bad consequences. So try to be alert right here. And the breath is a good place to make you alert right here because it's what keeps you anchored in the present moment. And the longer you stay here, the more you begin to see connections between cause and effect. So you begin to understand for yourself a lot of the principles that you may have read about in Dharma books, but now you suddenly see them clearly. Yeah, you're doing that too. This way you can change your habits. You're solving the problem of suffering from within. You don't have to depend on other people to solve it for you, because they're not creating the problem. It's the suffering that we add on unnecessarily to things that happen in life. That's what actually weighs the mind down. So work on that. The cause comes from within, but also the solution comes from within as well. Even when other people are doing harsh things to us, we don't have to suffer. It's We play along with them to make ourselves suffer. That's why we're suffering. But if we don't play along, there's no suffering. Make sure you make that distinction. And you can make it more clearly when the mind is really well established and really still and very clear like this. So try to develop and maintain this state of clarity as long as you can, because it's going to be your home base, it's going to be your foundation as you straighten out the rest of the mind. <laughs>